In summer, the good life starts for Malcolm and Christian in the garden, where dinner parties for 20 under their avo tree are a treat to be invited to. This being winter, Nico headed inside the 30s building that they bought as three apartments and turned into one comfortable and quirky home, which they share with their beloved dog, Yoji. Well, guys, this is lovely. I must say, I was so interested to find out what your home looks like, just to see if there's any correlation between your personal taste and your fashion creations. Our style is who we are. I think it happens everywhere. And I, I, I don't think there's a, there's a separation of business to home. I, I always think that your home is the place where you can do whatever you want. It really is your personal reflection but I kind of think we do that at work too. So it's not just a stylistic exercise, it's, it's a reflection of who you are. Absolutely, I think also when we travel or when we go some places or even inheritance pieces or whatever, we like to show them, we like to actually have talking points. So when you go into a room, it's something special because there's something in the corner that we've maybe found in a secondhand store or found in our travels. And we like to have these pieces to, to remind us of all these special times in our life. So is your home a work in progress or is there a kind of creative evolution going on? Oh my word, I think there's a huge evolution. I think we all, I always joke where I'll wake up in the morning and Malcolm has moved the lounge into the dining room and the dining room into the lounge. And I don't know how he's done it, but he's done it, you know, because there's always this like instant gratification. Terrible for continuity. There's, there's never anything that lasts the same any two days. Where do you find the time for that? Middle of the night, you'll see two, two I shouldn't say, there's two boys in underpants walking around with couches in the garden. <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> In the 13 years that they've lived here, each room has lived several lives. So, Nico, you'll see everything in our house is, um, is sort of heavily influenced by art, and um, it's either designed, collaborated, or found. This piece is from uh, Ceramic Matters, uh, one of the ceramicists that we love. Um, we love the surrealism of it, the irony of it. Well, Malcolm, I can't help but noticing that, you know, the, uh, the tusks, those aren't, they're not they're not real. We don't like anything that harms animals. They're made of resin, but they are a talking point. And uh, we love surrealism and we love the irony of them. And, and you'll see it a lot more in the house too. Oh, so I don't have to look out for the rest of the elephant? N no. <laughs> <laughs> the neon pink chair is an example of how they use one piece in a design collection to throw everything off with a shock to the system. In their choice of art and decor, the imperfect element makes you appreciate the whole. So this is the spare room. Um, we've got a, a, our bedspread, our treasured bedspread that we got uh, in Hong Kong. Some furniture that we went on holiday to Bali and couldn't live without, so it came back with us. Uh, Samantha Reed ceramics and a totem that we also had commissioned for one of our stores, which we loved so much we kept here. I can't help but noticing that. It was one of those that I think the light store manufactured or sampled and uh, didn't put in production because they didn't maybe like it as much as we would. <laughs> you know that thing where, where they say there's, there's beauty and ugliness? I think that's our philosophy. A rich arrangement of color, fabric, texture and art, their bedroom is a haven for reading. The dining room is a place to create magic, and Malcolm's favorite piece is to be found in the sitting room. I assume that's another one of those uh, fake pieces? That's exactly it. I think it's exactly what Malcolm was saying. We like the sort of tongue in cheek, you know? And uh, we actually, we found this on one of our travels, I think secondhand shopping, and was this little kiddie store with this tiger rug, and we just thought, you know what, why not let's put it in our lounge. Speaking of which, you have a, a truly unique art collection, and it really complements your home. We love art, so you'll see that we did a collaboration last year with uh, fashion photographers and we gave them our clothes and uh, this was by Cope Figgins and uh, we love the idea of the dog without the head but in our dress. Um, we love that sort of surrealism again, I suppose. Art, design and history inspire them. They soak up unusual imagery and create collections that make people think. Well, gents, it's settled. This house is without a doubt a true reflection of who you guys are, full of character, deliciously edgy, and with a certain sense of je ne sais quoi. Can the same be said of your studio? I think the studio is sort of our second home. It's, it's the home away from home, and uh, it's the same, but obviously the working space.
The ground floor houses the ready-to-wear collection, and even the room itself feels like it's wearing an outfit. Well, now at least I understand what you mean when you say that this is your home away from home. In fact, it seems a little bit bigger than your house. <laughs> a, little, a, little, a little bigger. I think if we talk about our house as the sketchbook, this is the canvas. This is where we really take it and refine it and, and, and we've played around and experimented at home with things that we love and this is where we, we select and edit and curate. The angular handrail of their staircase is by artist Rodan Kane Hart and follows their love of art. Okay, so this is the lair. I, I imagine all the uh, creative magic happens here. You know what, this is the place where we sort of come and hide away and, and run away from the crazy world out there and just sort of focus on designing our collections or focusing on the next collection that we'll be doing where we can hide all our trinkets and bits and bobs when we want to design and create. It's almost like a storyboard. And I see Yoji's quite comfortable here too. He loves this space. He's always with us all the time. But here, I mean, the bowl he eats out of is probably more expensive than the plates we eat from. But uh, that's Yoji. <laughs> This landing is a waiting room, and wherever you turn, it's like stepping through the looking glass into a completely different vision. So I think this is really an incubator space. This, this, this space really transforms from one month to the next. A lot of what we do is, is celebrating African luxury, and this is the space you get to see it. Well, in the same way that you've built this building from scratch, you've built your business from scratch as well, and now it's become a, a world-renowned showroom. So we've sort of divided the space into three different sections. You've got the ready-to-wear downstairs, then you've got the bridal room, and you've got this room, which is the more evening couture room. We've tried to create each room slightly a different experience. The bridal room, we've chosen the color to fit perfectly with your skin tone. So when you do wear an off-white or white dress, it sets off the color nicely. This room, we've put the sort of curtains in so that you can create different moods during the day. And that also gives it the opportunity to do the functions or the events we want to do here and creating those moods. Your designs are always so intricate and elaborate. What inspired your latest creations? I think fashion is fighting mass commercialism and I think it's becoming about personality, about uniqueness, about exclusivity. What we do at, at Kluxi GDT, it's all about how we mix color, about how we mix print, about being a little bit irreverent, a little bit subversive, making you stand out so when you walk into that boardroom, people notice you. So this is the ready-to-wear look that we've chosen today to show because it's combining prints and having a bit of fun with the leopard jacket and then the Blisco dress and then the little black bow which I think is very cute. Fashion is essentially showbiz, so when it comes to the business side of things, what is the ethos behind your brand? It's about fantasy, and we, we've always thought that, you know, the world outside, it's tough. So when you come through our doors, we've got to be transported to another world. Everything we do here has that kind of thing about emotion and memory and fantasy, and just to transport you and, and create magic. It's the aha moment. So you guys just never stop playing dress up? It's dress up every day here. It sounds like you've architecturally designed this place to suit your specific purposes. Absolutely, it's been a very, it was a two year project for us to design this building and actually build it from scratch. And it was probably a big dream of ours since we both can remember of wanting to build something for us the way we want it. And uh, it was quite fun, I must say, and, and the end result we love. I mean, this is literally our second home and we call it actually our townhouse. You never know, maybe we'll come and live here one day. Well, it sounds to me that you're gonna be focusing on the very thing that's made you so sought after worldwide and that's original, exclusive design. So whatever you do, I know it's gonna be a huge success. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Cheers. This is retail, showroom and studio all in one.